tells me about you. Pastor, what should I do on anniversary? Do what God tells you to do. Lord, to give it. Lord, you should come in, do your inviting and everything. We just want to have a good time in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Glory to God. <laughs> All right. Praise the, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's just good to see you here this morning. We thank God for his goodness, his mercy, and all that is good has to be God in it. Praise God. We thank God for our online people that are listening out there. Go ahead and wake up and come on in. Your seat is waiting for you. 
Praise God. You know, God is just a good God. This morning, I just want to exhort you on, a, on this particular type of topic, excuse me, speak the word. I said, speak the word. It's so important that we speak faith-filled words because faith-filled words release God and bring him on the, on the scene on your behalf. I said faith-filled words. Psalm 107, 2, King James Version said, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Say so. It's so important that we know and we pay attention to what we're saying because so many times we can think we're just talking. But when it comes to the word of God, we're not just talking. We have to learn to speak the answer to the problem and find the answer and then feed the word to it. You feed it to the problem. And we haven't always done that even as church people. Look at your neighbor and say amen. amen. Unscriptural talk cancels prayer. Let me say that again. Unscriptural talk will cancel your prayer. And how many of you want your prayers answered? Amen. Matthew 12, 37 in the NIV, it says, For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. Acquitted. You hear that word a lot these days. And acquitted means you, you're going to be let free, and, and, and condemned don't mean you may go to jail. <laughs> How many you know we don't want to go to jail spiritually? I looked over there, and uh, I know that in Deuteronomy it said that, uh, that God has set before us life and death and blessings and curses. Therefore, choose life. That lets me know today that we have a choice in what we say. Uh, we have a choice because our tongue has great power to heal or destroy, to bless or to curse. I know when I say that word curse, you think about them bad words. Well, it, you don't have to say bad words. Y'all know what I'm talking about, to be cursing. <laughs> there are some things we can say that will bring a curse. So we want to be able to know that we need to speak. Listen to what we say. James 1, 22 NIV said, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself, but do what it says. And right on down there, James 1, 26 NIV, it said, Those who consider themselves religious, y'all say religious, <laughs> and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues, deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. Many times when we talk on that scripture, we, 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 we don't connect healing and connect our prosperity to it. We just have it all, that all in the category by itself. But what you say, if you can't rein in your tongue, can affect your health and your wealth. Amen. So we want to make sure we know what we're saying because your body can be controlled if you can control the tongue. Because the body is like a child. <laughs> it will do whatever, whatever it want to do. How I many you know your body will eat a whole pizza or your body will, <laughs> will eat a dozen of donuts if you let it? And your body definitely will lay down and not get up. So he said, your body, what do you do with children? You train them. Because if you let them lay in bed, they will not go to school. Amen. Sickness and sin, though, come from Satan. And Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. We see this in Galatians 3.13, New King James Version. Say, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, curses everyone who hang on a tree. We have, uh, went over this particular topic on last week, but it, it lets us know that God has redeemed us. And whatever God has redeemed me from, I don't want to speak it on myself. Amen. It takes time, though, to train the spirit. One thing we know about God's word, though, if we have it on the inside of us, God never changes. 
but he changes things. How many of you want some changes in your life? Amen. Amen. So Matthew 18, 19 NIV said, again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my heavenly father. You say, what are we getting that one for? Because God's word is filled with faith, and that feeds the spirit man. And if we don't feed the spirit man, guess what's going to happen to the spirit man? What does that mean? We can't eat one, one, one meal on Sunday and think our spirit man is going to grow. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, Satan has taught the body to, to as far as, how it can overrule the spirit. So what we got to do with the word is make the word get that body in shape. Somebody say amen. Because the spirit man has to be trained. And there in that Matthew 18, 9, he said, if two agree. What do you mean if two agree? A lot of the time we just say, well, we're going to just agree on spiritual things. But you can find yourself agreeing on things that are not good for you. What do you mean? Give me an example, Pastor Ella. You can say, I'm coming down with the flu. I think I got the flu. And then you say, well, I'm going to tell a few people, call a few people. So by that time, you call 10 to 20 people, and you got them agreeing with you. Amen? And they agree with you. And, then you, and that's fertilizing. What's fertilizing what? You fertilizing the problem. It's one thing for you to call and say, I believe I'm healed. And then everybody start repeating, she believes you're healed. And you got some good fertilizer down. Otherwise, you spread negative fertilizer and you wonder, who said that? <laughs> Amen? Amen? And many times we'll go to God and we'll, we'll say we're praying, but it's complaining. <laughs> How many of you know God already know your problem? And all God wants you to do is come to him with the word. By his stripes, I'm healed. You know, a lot of times we think we got to rehearse to God everything that's going back. God, he already know that. Just tell me what you believe about that. Pray and speak the answer this morning. Never say in the kingdom of God what you don't mean. You took me to death. No, you didn't. <laughs> You have to train the spirit because it's a process of training the human spirit to believe what you say will come to pass. Because if you say it, the angels think that's what they believe. I'm just broke. Uh-uh, you better take that back. I can't, well, God's will for me to prosper. You know, these are little things that we need to be able to rehearse and go back on it. John 6, 63 NIV said, the spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing, the words are spoken to you, they are full of spirit and life. How many want your words filled with spirit and life? Speak what God say. Where? You speak what God say in public and in private. It's not enough for me to come out here in public and say, God's a healer, and I go home and say, I don't know if I'm going to be well or not. No, whatever you're saying in private, you better make sure it agrees with the word of God. Amen. So we have to say only what God wants us to say. Say only what you want to come to pass. How many of you know we got to say that today? Because, see, the mouth got us in trouble, and the mouth going to have to get us out of trouble. Every one of us. The mind will get you in trouble. Amen. And we can train the body. And, and, and we know that can happen. We train. How, how do you know you can train your spirit? How many of you ever had a pet? Or you ever been around a dog had it on the farm? We had dogs on the farm. We had Brian and, 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 and we had Spot. And a lot of the, the brothers out there, they have dogs that they train to hunt. I had a dog about... 15 years, had a cat about 20. And you know, that cat and that dog didn't come here speaking English. In fact, you know, think about it. And what you do is you repeat things over and over to them. You repeat that word. After a while, I could look at that cat and say, come on and go eat. Cat would jump down and come to the kitchen. Amen. 
And y'all, y'all, y'all may not have an animal, but you had one, your daddy had one, and you said, come here, Spot. <laughs> that dog come running. You know, we ought to have more sense than a dog and a cat. We ought to be able to train our body because, see, we're smarter than it. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm smarter than that. And if you can train an animal with your word by, by repeating it, you better start speaking to your arm, speaking to your legs. I know I, I looked at this lesson. I started just talking. Uh, uh, um, get in line with the word of God. Amen. Elementary. Yes, yeah, elementary, but you know what? We got to start speaking to some things. Get in line with the word. Well, I call my body heal. Get in line with the word. Well, and sometimes you may forget a part. And all you have to say is, from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, every cell, every system, come in line with the word of God. Oh, my goodness. That will cover everything. Because you may not know about the pancreas and the endocrine system. And, and you get it down like science. But I tell you what, you can tell every cell and every system to come in line with the word of God. You can repeat it. Say, so my youth is being renewed like the eagles, praise God. Because I need strength to do the work of the Lord. Works better than vitamins. Glory be to God. How many of you going to train your body? Praise God. And we need to be able to train our body if we can train an animal. Because the body was designed to be obedient to the word. When you come here as a baby, you weren't speaking English. But guess who's learning English by the time they got to? They begin to obey. How many of you can see that thing today? We're going to train our body to hear what the word say. We're going to be obedient to the word of God. And you, we're going to call our body here. And when you hear yourself speaking what God say, it will produce faith in you. And when you speak it yourself, it's, you'll more, be more quicker, you will, than if somebody else here say it. If you hear, you're just waiting on somebody else to tell you you heal, you need to tell yourself. Why? You believe yourself better than you do anybody else, don't you? Amen. You know, you just walk around and we used to think people were kind of a little, well, what's wrong with them talking to themselves? You know, we, 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 we'll say that. Quit talking to yourself. Well, you, if you're talking to yourself and saying something that the words say, that's a good thing. Amen. Praise God. Hear yourself. You don't always obey what someone else says, but you do obey your words but because they govern you. God is a good God. Well, what will you say then? Over there in Matthew 16, 19, our last verse, King James Version. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Something going on from earth to glory. Whatever going on up there, going on down here. Is there any sickness in heaven? None. Is there any poverty in heaven? None. So what will you say? Poverty or health? What will you say? Bind, are you going to bind sickness? Or are you going to take illness? What will you have? Will you have fear or faith? It's all in what you say. Watch what you're saying. Amen. How many of you going to watch it even closer? Uh, we have to catch ourselves. We'll say something. We heard grandmama say, oh, that's what we used to say. Well, we can't say everything we used to say. I really don't want to be dead before this time another year. <laughs> Amen. How many of you want to say what the words say about you? Glory be to God. Go ahead and stand up. And not only do you say it, you sing it. <laughs> well, get over there and pray the word and say the word and get up and start singing one of them died and I'm unbelief song. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, you know, you got to know whether you're going to be acquitted or condemned. God is good today. Amen. Praise him. Praise him without any music. Praise God. Praise him like you know he's coming. Jesus is coming back again. Praise him like if he came back today, you would be ready to go. Praise God. Glory be to God. Praise him like you're blessed because you are. Praise him, praise God, because he hadn't changed, but he's here today to change things in your life. 
He's a good God. Praise the Lord. Praise him, hallelujah, because he is good and he is worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We know he's coming back again. Amen. We want to be ready when he comes. Hallelujah. Praise your God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. These are the days of Elijah. Declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. Yes. And though these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword, still we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, he comes. riding on the clouds, on, shining like the sun, Hallelujah. and the trumpet calls, lift your voice, lift your voice. the year of jubilee, and out of Zion till salvation comes. And these are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant David, rebuilding a temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest, the fields are as white in your world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes, yeah. riding on the clouds, Hallelujah. shining like the sun. And the trumpet, trumpet calls, lift your, lift your voice. voice. It's the year of jubilee, and out of Zion till salvation comes. Salvation comes. You, Come on, church, let's declare it. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. Do you know anybody? There's no God like Jehovah. Nobody. There's no God like Jehovah. Nobody. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, he comes. Riding on the clouds. Shining like the sun. Hallelujah. Have a trumpet call. Lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee. And out of Zion till salvation come. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. And the trumpet calls, lift your voice. It's the year of jubilee. And out of Zion till salvation come. So lift your voice. It's the year of jubilee. And out of Zion till salvation comes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's no God like Jehovah. Amen. Thank God for the days of Elijah. Amen. Here y'all go. Glory to God. Thank God. You want to take that? Thank you. Wasn't that good? How many know? He's coming back again. And you know who he's coming back for? Who? Amen. Didn't Pastor Ellis tell you to just start saying, saying the right things? Amen. He's coming back after us. All those who are ready to go. Are you ready to go? Oh, I had to clarify that last week. I'm not getting a load up right now now. 
<laughs> I, won't, I, I, I realized I didn't repeat the story last time, so, so I'm not going to repeat it again about the little boy. Glory to God. Amen. Some of you say, oh, thank Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Amen. I'll wait till next time to do it. Amen. We thank God for his goodness, and we thank God for you. We thank God for, for his goodness goodnesses and mercies that are being renewed every morning like the eagles and, and we're growing in the things of God. How many of y'all growing? How many of you are maturing in the things of God? How many of you actually can sense that in your own body, in your own, in your, in your, in your own renewing of your mind, that you're maturing spiritually, that you're becoming stronger in the Lord and in the power of his mind? How many, I mean, I want to see your hands if you really believe that and you, if you sense it. Well, I thank God that you do. God's word will work for anyone that will work the word in their, in their lives or allow God to work the word. That's reading really is so important for what, what comes out of our mouths. You just ought not to let just any old thing thing come out of your mouth and say any old thing and because before you before you know it you're going to be doing any old thing that you said god wants us to have his best in every area in every arena of our lives and because we walk by faith and not by sight amen and we ought to be walking in the integrity of god's word just want to let you know remind you hey a week away what the church anniversary and homecoming. 30 years of reaching the World Bible Church. Amen. There ought to have been more reaction to that. You ought to, I mean, if you were ever going to jump in the pews and shout, that would have been 30 years of reaching the World Bible Church. Hallelujah. Celebration from faith to faith. God has blessed us. Just look around. God has blessed us, and he wants to even do more. On Sunday, September 24th, next Sunday at 1 p.m., we're going to be celebrating our 30th church anniversary and homecoming. Our guest church is the Shallow Missionary Baptist Church. Pastors Michael and Dr. Angela Walker are going to be here, and we're going to have a great time in the Lord. We're going to celebrate in Jesus, and we're going to walk and talk and live and move and have our being in him every day of our lives. And we thank God for, for what he's done these past 30 years, and we thank God if Jesus tarries what he's going to do the next 30. Amen? I don't know if we're going to be around another 30 on, on this side. I mean, well, Pastor, you mean folks going to go home to be with the Lord? Well, some are, but then because uh, there are departures and there's arrivals every day. Uh, one of my mentors in the, in, in the ministry, uh, 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 Pastor Keith Moore, that used to be one of his things that he taught on, departures and arrivals. If you live long on this earth, you're going to see a lot of folks leave, but you're going to see a lot of folks born into this earth too as well. And God wants us to know that, hey, that we need to always be ready. But one of these days, the trumpet's going to sound. And the dead in Christ is going to rise first. And all of, us, all of us that are alive, we're going to meet him in the air. And then we're going to be in our, in our eternal home, glory to God. And I thank God that the very best that you've ever been, you're going to be better than that. Amen. I used to like that song we used to sing, Better Than That. Because we, we're going to be better than we've ever been. The very best that you've ever looked, you're going to look better than that. The very best that you've ever uh, uh, achieved, you're going you're gonna to achieve better than that in the things of God. And, and don't think strange of heaven is going to be a strange place. Heaven is not going to be strange. It's just going to be better than anything you ever experienced. It's going to be a lot like earth in a sense of this is a copy of it that's been diluted with sin. So, so, uh, so all the iniquities and the bad things that, that on this earth, we're not going to experience any of, the, any of those things in heaven. But it's going to be perfection of worship and praise. But, you know, we're going to be, we're going to be working and doing things, I think, throughout eternity. We're just going to be doing it with joy. And we're going to be doing it with peace. A lot of folks think, think well, you're just going to be in church 24-7 in heaven. Well, it's not going to be a 24-7 like we know it. But, hey, we're going to be in worship of God. But I believe he's going to, we're going to be in assignment. This earth is ruling and reigning rehearsal. We're going to be ruling and reigning. Did you realize that as a believer, 
as a Christian that you're going to be judging angels? No. Yes, that's what the scripture says. Is that in the word, Pastor? You know, it's a lot of good things in the Bible. You ought to read it sometime. <laughs> I know you read your Bible. I thank God, but hey, 30 years of celebration. And God has been so good to us, and we just want to celebrate his goodness. And we're going to have a good, good time, Lord. And I'm going to say this. I said this for the beginning, and for our, our, our church family that are at home and not here today, uh, normally fourth Sunday is our emblem Sunday. We're going to suspend that. We're going to be in our uh, next Sunday. We, we encourage you. I mean, at, as I said earlier, you can be decently in order and come in anything that you want to, but we're going to be in our, our church attire uh, uh, a little bit more uh, than, than normally on fourth Sunday because of our celebration. And so we want to, you to know that and tell your friends and, and that for, especially the church members that are coming. And it's fine if folks come in, in a church attire. It's, it, that, that, that's perfectly fine. And the T-shirts and emblem shirts for us, that. But we just want to put our best foot forward. Amen? And uh, we just thank God for that, and we thank God for you. So next Sunday at 1 o'clock, hey, gonna, we're going to be here. Amen? How many are looking forward to it like me? Amen, I am, and I'm, I'm so glad that you are, too. Glory. And even if you didn't raise your hand, I'm just going to take it by faith that you're going to look, start looking forward to it. All right. It's investment time. I say this, that's another time where you, okay, we, we're going to have to start rehearsing on some stuff and practicing. When I say it's investment time, that means church in the house here, that means you ought to jump, shout, and cheer, and just have a good time and praise God. Because the Bible says, and we see it on our envelope, that we ought to be a cheerful giver, exuberant, excited about what we do. And I'll read it right now in 2 Corinthians 9. Uh, verses uh, 6 and 7, and it's in the NIV, on your envelope. You, if you've got your envelope, look at it. It says, remember this, whosoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whosoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your hearts to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. I said, it's investment time. Yeah. Glory to God. That, that's it. Glory to God. <laughs> I thank God that I get to give. Opportunity for me to plant seed and get ground. I believe reaching the world Bible church is good ground. When I sow in reaching the world, I'm believing God for a hundredfold return on my giving. I thank God for all my needs being met above and beyond what I can ask or think. I call my bills paid. I call my body healed. I call delivery. I call the supernatural finances to come on in. How many standing on that billion dollar faith? Glory to God. Amen. How many standing? How many of y'all standing on uh, a penny faith? No one raised a hand. Well, then, but a few of y'all raised your hand on a billion dollar faith, so I thought you must have went on down. No, don't go down, go up, glory to God. I thank God that we get to give and we get to experience the blessings of God every day of our lives. And the more we do, we ought to make that confession. Again, our words matter. And so as we get ready to give, and for those of you at home, there are many ways you can do that. You're going to see them on the screen of how you can give in just a moment. But we like to make some good faith confessions over our offerings and over our words. And uh, as, you, as you see, Cash App, PayPal, online. You can do that in the house or outside of the house. You can uh, we also get given by a regular mail for us that. But you ought to do something. Every time you come to Reach the World Bible Church, do something. It's between you and God what you do for us you're giving. But do something because when you plant that seed, as we said, it according to what you give, that's what you're going to receive back. You're living on what you gave a year ago. And some of you say, oh, no, is that the reason I'm in such bad shape? Yep. Or, oh, yes, that's the reason God's blessing me so abundantly above I can actually think, yes, amen. So if you want to change or make better what positions that you have so generously with a generous, cheerful attitude and then give your best, whatever that best is. And that's different for different folks. But we thank God that when we sow, we ought to be in expectation. 
Please repeat after me. As I tithe and give offering, I'm believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, discounts and dividends, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills decrease, bills paid off, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs, that I may have more than enough to give unto the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. What I confess, I will possess now in Jesus' name. Go ahead and raise your offering envelope, and let's just sow and give and thank God that he's going to meet us at our faith. And as we give, we're believing God for it. 100-fold increase. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you as we sow seed, we sow in faith. We sow thank you that all our personal needs are met above and beyond what we could ask or think. And Lord, we thank you for the needs of reaching the World Bible Church being met supernaturally, abundantly above. And Lord, we just thank you because you're an abundantly above God. You supplied not only all our needs, but you told us that you would give us the desires of our hearts. When our hearts line up with your word, you are, your answer is always yes and amen to what we're believing for. And Lord, we thank you for that one other fold return. We thank you for our unsaved loved ones being saved. We, we, we commission the angels to go out and cause the finances to, to come. Satan, what you've stolen for, from us, you got to give us double back, double for our trouble according to the word. We believe that, we receive that, we say that, we confess it, and we claim those unsaved loved ones. We, Lord, we ask you that you would send effective laborers by their pathway, that they would hear and that they will receive from, and that they shall or will be saved. And Lord, we thank you for that, and Lord, we thank you for whatever else you see for that, and if you agree with that, just say amen. That means it so be it. Brother, you go ahead and minister to the people. youth. You can follow past Ella back to the youth, your youth class, and we just thank God for you and that y'all going to have a great time, man, God, in the youth class. Our children are downstairs already, and they're having fun, and we just thank God for them. Uh, I just thank God, and for you youth at home and you parents and grandparents, your children, especially if they can't drive, they can't come here. They need to be in the house to where the anointing is and where they can hear truths. They're hearing stuff from folks that are ungodly on a daily basis. You need to combat that with the word of God. And the best place that they can be on Sunday morning is in the house to where the word of God is being poured out. The anointed, yoke-destroying, burden-removing power of God. And if you have that authority over them, first of all, it's your responsibility as a parent, as a grandparent, to, to do that for them. And if they can come, you do everything you can to make sure that they, they, if they're driving themselves, that they come with you. And, but you have to be here. Amen. Those of you that are here are. Those of you that are at home, some of you could be. But it's a choice. You make that choice. And it's like anything else. What's important to you, that's what you do. It was important for me to watch a couple of ball games yesterday. I did. Thank God, even though both of my teams played and they didn't play very well, they both won. Uh, 
Amen. Just barely. <laughs> Amen. But I thank God they did. But you know what? If I can get that serious, and Pastor Ella tell you, she says I coach from the from the from the uh, grandstands of usually either my chair or my bed, whatever I'm watching it from. But but if I can get excited about a a ball game, an oblong ball or a round one when it's basketball season. How much more I ought to be excited about the things of God. Amen. I'm excited. There's anointing in this house today. I hope you sense that. From Pastor Ella ministering and praise team ministering in song, hymn, and spiritual song. There's a, there's a unique anointing here today that you can draw on. There's a yoke destroying, burden moving power that's in here that you need to grasp. So I ask you to be in faith with me. I ask you to, to, to turn your... To, for us to join our faith together and so that we can uh, witness God's best and whatever he, he'll say to you. I'm not going to be long today, but there's some things I think that are very important, especially for the days that we live in. Go ahead and take your Bible or your electronic device and please repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I am who it says I am. I can do what the Word of God says I can do. I can be and become what the Word of God says I can be and become. I boldly confess my mind is alert, my heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, the indestructible, the ever living seed faith word of God. And I'll never be the same. Never, ever, ever. Will I be the same again in Jesus' name? Look at a neighbor and say, we'll never be the same again. Point to yourself, I thank God I will never be the same because of the word of God. I will grow stronger. I will grow more powerful in the empowerment of grace, in the empowerment of mercies, in the empowerment of doing love toward everyone that I encounter. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm an overcomer. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I got it. I got it like that because God's in me. Amen. Do you got it like that? Amen. I I, I, I heard, heard a coach recently, I've been watching and been telling folks in his part of the country that we're coming. Amen. And uh, I thank God. You know, Jesus is coming. Are you ready for him to come? Amen. Glory to God. Uh, are you ready to, to receive the blessings? Of God? Are you ready to go with him when he comes? Well, that's some things I want to talk to you about. Because on this earth, we need to be ready because there are things happening all around. How many of you notice uh, all around that uh, uh, as we look at just all, not just in our part of the world, but all over the world, there's all kinds of uh, things that are happening. There's all kinds of storms that are going on. And I think I was in, inspired to talk about some of those things because no matter who you are, no matter where you are, in the natural as well as in the spirit, there are storms that we are going to encounter. But thank God for those of us that are believers, we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be scared of any natural storm or any spiritual storm that may come into your life. Pastor, what are you talking about? Well, there's a very key thing that we must do, that we always need to do, and it's a part of our faith walk, and it should be part of our faith talk and our faith actions that we must do that will help us because storms in life are going to come. They come to everybody, and we entitled this message today, Trust God in the Storms. Trust God in the storms. 
I don't know, I think most of us, especially in this, this part of the country, we understand and we've been, we've experienced storms. I've been in some, you know, most of us have been in, uh, some, some of us have been in bad storms in, in life and things. You know, this is, uh, used to be called Tornado Alley, where uh, a lot of tornadoes come and still do, uh, you know, different parts of the country country have hurricanes and part of our west coast earthquakes and different things but there are all there are natural storms that we experience that that you know usually for most folks when you're a believer when a storm occurs you you look in, you looking toward Jesus you trust you trust in God I can remember I always think about when I think about storms uh, one of the most intense storms that I ever been since Ellen and Christopher and I were driving to Dayton on Ohio, and we were we were going to do a service there, uh, and uh, we we were driving. It was the first time I, I'd driven to Dayton, and the interstate was there, and we were uh, it, it, it had gotten dark, and and all of a sudden, I mean, the greatest downpour of rain and storms that I, I'd ever been a part on the road. I've been in some that were bad, but this one was, I mean, you couldn't see hardly in front of you at all. You couldn't see the sides of the road. The rain was coming down so much. And, I, you know, there were cars ahead of us, and we all slowed down, and we were there, and past that, and it was late. for it seemed, it seemed like for an hour or so, I don't think it was that long, but it seemed like for, for maybe 20 miles, I think maybe 10, that that, that rain just kept increasing and the storm kept in and I was slowing down and, and I could barely see a couple of feet in front of me and, and, and I was on an interstate that I'd never been on before so I didn't know the contours of the roads and, and then Pastor Ella there, Christopher was standing up in the back, he was probably about eight or nine at that time and, and, uh, and, and we, were, we were all uh, just, just, uh, just, just really intensely watching the road and what was going on in this storm and a downpour of rain and water and everything that goes with a storm and and uh and we were I, I was praying and i know pastor Ella was praying i bet christopher was praying too as well because we trust god we believe god and it what seemed like for, for an hour, and I know it couldn't have been that long, but it was such an uh, intense storm that, that, that it was, and, and not knowing what my surroundings at all, but all of a sudden, it just seemed like it just appeared. I looked over to my left, and I saw a sign that I was so happy to see. And I'm not advertising for them, but that day, I was happy to see it. It said, Holiday Inn Express. And it was light. And on this side, I saw exit. I wheeled right over there, but Ken, I wheeled over there quickly. <laughs> it turned down, and, went, and you had to go up under the, the interstate. Boy, that went over there. And you talking about happy to get in a hotel room for a night and off of the road? Boy, the peace of God. And you talking about an enjoyable sleep that night? Wow, because the storms of life had, 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 I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know exactly where I was. I didn't know what time, but it just seemed like it, we were, I mean, it didn't stop raining. The storm was still there, the clouds were still there, but all of a sudden it just appeared on the side over there. God will make a way of escape for us when we trust him. In the storms in our natural lives. And I think about ah, did you, even the things that are going on in, in the Middle East now, in Libya, all those floods. Did you see that where over 9,000 people have died? And there, I think I saw 10,000 later, and 9,000 are missing right now. And other floods, thousands in different parts of the world, thousands of folks are dying in these storms. And Thousands and thousands that are, are missing in these storms. And that's on the natural side. I believe that's a type of what's going on where there's people that are dying in the storms of life spiritually. People, Christians in churches are missing. And nobody seems to know where they are. 
because there's storms going on in the spiritual realm. We need to know what to do in the storms of life. We focus this message in. I believe that God gave us this word, not only for those of us that are here, but those of you that are watching online and those that will see this. It's so important that we understand these things, how to trust God. We highlighted or focused on this word for the next few minutes. God wants us to live in a place of victory. But there's a prerequisite for living in what belongs to us as believers. And it is trusting in the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, I will trust in the Lord at all times. Yes. If these praises aren't continually being in your mouth, no one knows, really, you don't even know if you're really trusting him or not. Because when you trust him, you're going to praise him. When I saw Holiday Inn Express, I praised the Lord. Because I could get out of the storm. I could get in a place of protection and safety. God has a place of protection and safety for you and I. No matter what storm is going on in your life right now. But we got to trust in him. When I look in Proverbs, and we'll look in there. We're going to look at this in Proverbs chapter 3. And you're very familiar with this passage. We're going to look at it in two translations. First in the King James, two verses. And then three in the, in the message. But Proverbs 3, verse 5 says this. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all, not some, not, not when you're happy, not, not when, you, when everything's good, just going good, but in all your ways. Acknowledge him. And he shall what? He shall what? In other words, he'll lead and guide you into all truth. He'll show you where to go and where not to go. He'll direct your path. But I mean, no, when someone's directing you, if you refuse to follow, their direction doesn't do you any good. I can remember being in the band, and I, played, I was in the band before I started being in athletics, from the fifth grade to the ninth grade, and, and I played the trombone. And I, I thank God, uh, my, my, my band director was Perry Andrews. He's gone home to be with the Lord, but he's, his wife is, is, is still alive now, and I see her, and they, they bless me. But he taught me how to play a trombone, and he, would, he, would, he, he taught us how to follow directions of what he wanted us to do, no matter what. Uh, section we were in, no matter what instrument we were using, whether it was the, the brass section or the woodwinds, or those of you that know music, you know what I mean when I say that, uh, how uh, in, in, in different music uh, uh, programs, how when he wanted you to, to, to come stronger, he would, he would tell you, and as he was directing and, and flowing, and he would tell you when, you give, when to give more, you learn to follow uh, when he, just with his hands and with his experience expressions of his face of what he needed from you from that session for you to perform and and play at the very best to get the best sounds and get the very best music that that sound and 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 performance and minister and really and play for folks so that, so that they can enjoy it i learned how to follow directions at an early age, even before then with my own parents, and them giving us directions and acknowledge them. And I learned, uh, I can remember being in, in, uh, on a band contest. We would go to music, and I, and I can remember one, we went to a contest, and, and our band, uh, we went to Douglasville, Georgia. It used to be, be, be a time and a place to, where we had marching uh, uh, contest and and we got all one that was superior ratings and uh, it, our, our brass session uh, it wasn't uh, we had many more uh, 
uh, woodwinds and everything, but uh, we, he, uh, I remember the, they, they, we got tapes of the judges that judged us, and, and, they, and I can remember this judge saying, oh, wow, y'all are strong. And I remember this, one of the judges said, oh, he said, you, 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 as we could hear the music playing, he said, he said, brass session, you're, you're overblowing, you're overpowering uh, the rest of the band. You need, you need to, need to calm it down. I mean, y'all strong, y'all strong. And we had fewer, fewer in a brass session than we did any, any else. But we were, we were at a high level for a performance. And, and he said, but, but, but it's good. It's good. And he was directing us and, and judging us and showing to why he wanted us to improve what we were doing. God wants us to improve our walk with him. But it's so important that we understand you got to trust who's leading you and who's guiding you. Look at the neighbor and tell him, you need to learn how to trust God in everything that you do. Acknowledge him and he will lead and guide you into all truth. He'll direct your path. Proverbs 3, starting at verse 5, and I like how the message says it. Proverbs 3, verse 5 of the message says this. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. That's a good word in and of itself. Notice what else it says. Listen for God's voice in everything that you do. Everywhere you go. Not just on church on Sunday mornings, but when you go to the Walmart, when you're on the road, when you're on the interstate, when you're driving, when you're at the family reunion and, and that crazy cousin of Pookie that, that, that you have is there and he's starting to act a fool. And you know how it is when he come over and you know you, you, you Y'all used to fight when you were young, and you don't want to fight him now in front of everybody since you done got old. But thank God you got the Spirit of God on the inside of you. Listen to what the Spirit of God tells you. Calm down. That reminds me of a story. This uh, father was, was uh, shopping in the grocery store, and he had a baby boy. In the, in the front, uh, 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 you know, in the cart there, and he was, he was walking there and doing shopping, shopping different things, and people started watching because he started talking. He said, he said, calm down, Jimmy, calm down. And I, I know we got some Jimmys in here, so we're not talking about y'all, but this is just my story. That happened to be the name. And uh, he said, calm down, Jimmy, calm down, Jimmy. He was shopping and doing stuff, getting over. He said, calm down, Jimmy. Calm down, Jimmy, he said. And this lady saw him. She was watching him for a while shopping. And she came up to him. She said, sir, I just want to compliment you on, on uh, you being so kind and, 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 and helping your, your, your little boy. And I thank God. I want you to know I bet little Jimmy is going to turn out to be a good man when he grows up. And the man looked at Sterling and I, he said, uh, I'm Jimmy. <laughs> he went, talk to the baby. <laughs> he was the one that needed to call down. <laughs> and she couldn't help but to laugh. You know, but God, in everything that you do, everywhere that you go, he's the one, the, the message Bible said in Proverbs 3. It says, he's the one who will keep you on track. This is Proverbs 3, 5 through 7 here. Uh, I, I say, he says, again, I'll listen to that uh, verse 6 again. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. And then it says, don't assume that you know it all. Who you reckon he's talking to now? He says, run to God. And run from evil. How I many know there's all kinds of evils out in the world? God wants us to run, run from them. But not just run anywhere, run to him. That word trust God 
in the storms is important. But we need to define it. Trust what it would be. First of all, I want you to know, trust is one of the key elements of faith. If you don't trust God, you can't walk in faith because you won't listen to what he says. The Hebrew word trust is intense. And it means in the Hebrew to lean the whole body on something to rest on it. In other words, you lean and you put your entire weight, you put your entire uh, uh, just, just uh, flow on him, on the trust. You rest in your trust. But it's intense. Storms, when they come, are intense. They have lightning. They have thunder. They have, and all kinds of things happen. Wind. It's intense, storms are. But we've got to be intense in our trust. The Webster's Collegiate Dictionary defines trust like this. It says, assured reliance on the character, the ability, the strength, or truth, or someone, or something. One which confidence is placed. When you place your confidence in God, you lean totally on him. You trust what he says because you know him. You can't trust someone you don't know or you won't trust someone you don't know. That's the reason it's so important for us to know God. And how do I get to know God? Through his word. How do I get to know him well? Through knowing his word well. Through, through flowing with him, through talking with him, through fellowshipping with him. The more I fellowship and trust him, the more I'm going to walk in the best we operate in trust every day. You're operating in trust right now. What do you mean, preacher? When you came in, you sit down on those pews. You trusted him to hold you up. You're not even thinking about it. Until I say anything about it, you're not even thinking about the possibility. You know, some furniture, you go into some places, you sit on it, and it just breaks down, and you fall down. You trust that. You trust those pews. You trust when... Every day, when you step on your brakes in your car, you trust that they're going to slow you down. You have full confidence that when you put your foot on the brake, that that car is going to stop. Every day, we trust something. When you eat your food, you trust that that nutritious value is going to come into your body and you're going to get the nutrients and you're going to be built up and grow stronger and that food is not going to harm you. You trust it to nourish your body. If we can trust natural things, how much more ought we trust our Heavenly Father who is control and has authority, who has ultimate authority on everything, in everything, and who we give him control. And people that say, you've heard me say this before, well, God is in control. If he's in control, God's in control of everything. If he is, he sure has made a mess of everything. No, God gave us control or authority on this earth. People, I think people feel better when they feel like, you know, I, I can remember uh, parents and grandparents used to telling, you know, I remember my parents saying this, well, you know, God rides every tornado. And, he, you know, he's going to protect us. And I know it made them feel better, and it made us feel better. But, I mean, no, God ain't riding no tornado. He didn't cause no tornado. Because if God riding every tornado, why is so many people getting killed? Did he just dislike them? They were bad. You reckon they were any better than us? No. Even insurance companies, they cause storms and things. That's an act of God. No, they aren't. Storms and things aren't an act of God. They're acts of the devil. 
Devil is the one that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. They're mis uh, character in God. Disasters aren't acts of God. Disasters are acts of the devil. But thank God we know who we trust in. And we know we can lean and lay on him. And he know, we know he's going to help us during the storms. And he's going to show us. Because he's already gone from, from the end before the beginning ever, start, or ever started. You know, sometimes we need to have a great understanding. John 6, verse 16 through 21 in the NLT. Even the disciples had to have a great understanding of what trust was. You remember this, this story that, that evening in John 6, starting at verse 16, that evening Jesus' disciples went down to the shore to wait for him. But as darkness fell and Jesus still hadn't come back, they got into the boat and headed across the lake toward Capernaum. Soon a gale of wind, this is the NLT translation I'm reading, to, reading out of, it says, soon a gale of wind swept down upon them, and the sea grew very rough. They had rowed three or four miles when suddenly they saw Jesus walking on the water toward the boat. They were terrified, the scripture said. But he called out to him, don't be afraid, I'm here. Thank God when Jesus is here, when you're a believer, and you know that. You know you can trust him. He said, don't be afraid. I'm right here. When we were in that storm, I knew that God was with us. But I was praying. I was seeking him. But when I saw that flashing sign that said Holiday Inn Express, I said, thank you, Jesus. I know we're, we're, we're going to be all right. Verse 21 of John 16 says this, Then they were eager to let him in the boat, the disciples, and immediately they arrived at their destination. When Jesus gets in the boat with you, no matter what kind of storm you're in, you're going to get to your destination. But as we talked about the other, it's not about from us getting to point A only. It's it's about the journey. What are you doing? What are you saying in, in the journey? Are you focusing in on Jesus? Are you trusting him? That when, when, when they come and tell you that, that uh, uh, such and such has happened with your child or such, you have such and such, uh, are you trusting in Jesus? Are you saying, well, Lord, I thank my God that he supplied all my needs. I'm calling my body healed all the well because he said it was. Are you saying, well, the doctor said you're going to die? What are you going to do? Well, the doctor said I was going to die. Don't the doctor know? No, the doctor don't know everything. Thank God for good physicians. Thank God for good medical people. But I mean, no, a natural human being doesn't have the final answer for you. That's not the final answer for me. That's the reason we teach and preach the way we do. That's the reason we instill in you the word of God. The word says, by his stripes you were healed. Healing is a part of the children's bread. No matter what you report you get. I've gotten bad reports before. What do I do? I do what I teach you to do. I trust God. I start calling my body healed only well. I speak to it. I speak to my body. I speak to, my, I speak to whatever the difficulty is. I speak to the problem. I don't magnify the problem. Said, oh no, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I trust God. I call my body healed. I call my body well. I call my blood pressure normal. I call my eyes 20 20. I call my blood sugar levels normal. I call my body heal. I speak to it. I say, come in line with the word in the name of Jesus. Pastor, you speak to your body? Yes. And I expect it to, to do what I tell it to do. Pastor, I'll give you an example. Now, if your dog and cat come when you tell them to come, 
Don't you have confidence in the fact that you have authority over your own body? And when you say what God says about you, you ought to have trust that he will do what he says. How many God ever bless you? Raise your hand. If he, ever, if he ever healed you of anything, if he ever, he ever saw you through some situations, if he ever saw you through one time, don't you know he's going to see you through again? And there's nothing that's too big for God when we trust him. When we trust him. But you know, sometimes we haven't gotten a clue of how God can work out a situation. Sometimes we, because th we're thinking in our own uh, sometimes minds that have not been fully transformed or renewed by the word of God. And we don't have a clue what to do or what not to do. And, and, and so the situation seems too big for us. And for us just naturally, it may be too, too big for us alone. I mean, no, when you're a believer, when you're a son or daughter of God, you're never alone. When I walked in here this morning, I didn't come in by myself. Yeah, Pastor Ella was with you. Thank God Pastor Ella was with me. But she wasn't the only one with me. Everywhere I go, the anointing of God is with me because the presence of, of God lives on the inside of me. Great is in, he that's in me and he that's in anything or anything that's out there in the world. When you know who you are in Christ, you start operating that way. You talk like that. You walk like that. You live your life knowing that he's more than a conqueror. He's alone, and that you're more than a conqueror, because you're his. You know, I thank God I, sometimes I don't have to have a clue. I quit trying to figure out everything. What do you do, Pastor? I trust God. I'm going to hurry up and come, up, come to a good cutting off point, but this is just getting good, Tim. I hope you're enjoying this. Trust God in your storms. Storms come to everybody. If you hadn't experienced a storm yet, you keep living. One's coming. One's coming. But thank God when you know who's you are, you know you can trust God. I like what Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9 in the NLT says. Isaiah 55, verse 8 says this. My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. Thank God. He, he's above and beyond anything that we could ask or think. He has the answers. Verse 9 says, For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. When we remember and we're reminded of the plan that God has for us by the word of God, we can take all the pressure off our back. You had not got to figure out what you're going to do to eat. It, the scripture says, if he takes care of the birds, they don't have to visit psychiatrists to see what they're going to eat. You ever saw a, a cardinal going to the hospital to see the psychiatrist that, Doc, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to continue to fly. No. They just fly. They chirp. It just seems like they're happy all the time. If he take care of the birds and the air and all of the other animals, what makes us think he's not going to take care of us? We're his sons and daughters. He loves us. He cares about us. But we got to trust him. we got to do our part. We got we to realize that God wants us. And finally, I want to, you know, I, I could go on for, for a long time with this teaching about trust God in a storm because there's so many storms going on in people's lives. There are financial storms. There are physical storms. There are spiritual storms. There's relationship storms. There are storms with children. There are storms with grandchildren. There are storms, the enemy, as we know in John 10.10, 10, the thief, the devil, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to bring storms. And he's been doing it for over 2,000 years, and he's good at it. But thank God Jesus said in that same verse, I have come, and I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. So we can trust God in the storms. But I love what the, the book of Psalms says. And this is my last outline. Psalms of trust. Psalms of trust. A song 
is a hymn or a spiritual song of uh, uh, music that the psalmist wrote to bring comfort, to bring peace, to bring, and that's really, it's good to read psalms uh, a lot. And you, you, and you read about psalms of peace, psalms of trust, but I just want to give you a few psalms of trust, and I'm going to read them to you from the Amplified Classic translation. Certain verses in Psalms that will give us and show us that we can trust God. You can trust God whether your spouse is acting nuts, whether the children are going off on a deep end, whether the doctor gave you a bad report, or whether the, the, it looks like your month is longer than your finances. What do I do? What do you do? Trust God. He said, I supply all your need according to my riches and glory. That means not just talking about financial need. That's talking about emotional, physical, in every kind of need that you may have. What do I do? I trust God, but my mind has to be renewed to what trust is. Isn't it? If the storm is intense, my trust in God has to be more intense. getting excited about this. I'm really excited about trusting God. Psalms of trust. And then we're going to stop. Psalms 18 verse 30. And again I'm reading from the Amplified Classic. It says this. As for God, his way is perfect. Isn't it? When we read in the King James, most of the time that word perfect means mature for us. But God's way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tested and tried. He is a shield to all those who take refuge and put their trust in him. That shield of faith which no fiery dart from the enemy that he shoots at you can penetrate. It's not just a small shield, it's a full body shield. Nothing can penetrate it because God is your shield. He is your buckler. And you have refuge when you put your trust in him. Psalms 32.10. Psalms 32.10. Many are the sorrows of the wicked. But he who trusts in, notice this, trusts in, relies on, and confidently leans on the Lord shall be compassed about all around you with mercy, and with loving kindness. When you trust God, you know you can rely on him. He's never let me down, and he never will, and he won't let you down. You can confidently lean on him. You don't have to worry about, you know, you, all of us have that, usually saw people, or you probably done it with that, that uh, test of trust, and you know, you have somebody, you say, I want you to stand before me, and I'm going to hold out, and you just fall back, and I'll catch you. You know, a lot of folks, you wouldn't dare do that with, would you? Even some of your family. And they'll tell you, I'll catch you, I'll catch you. <laughs> and you know you can't trust them. You can lean back if you want to. <laughs> a lot of folks tell you, I'm going to be there, I'll be there. And they done told you they were going to be there so many times, they ain't got there yet. But God, you can rely on him. You can trust him. He's a man of his word. He's a being of his word. And he told you, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll stick closer to you than a brother. He will do it every time. We can trust him when we can't even trust ourselves. He said, trust him, rely on and comfortably lean on the Lord. He'll accomplish you about with mercy. Look at nature. Thank God for his mercy and loving kindness. These are the Psalms of trust. Psalms 34, 8, just a couple more. And I love this one too. Oh, taste and see that the Lord, our God, is good. Amen. That's what God tells us. He said, taste and see, I'm good. I was having, this was a spiritual dream I had. I, I don't talk about those very often. And some things that I was dealing with and, and God has spoken to my heart and in this dream. And, uh, and I, 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 was, I was hesitant about some things that, in a dream. And God spoke to my heart. He said, won't you trust me, son? Won't you trust me? And I said, yes, sir. Why 
that I know I could trust him because he's never let me down. I thank God my, my, my father's gone home to be with the Lord. And my dad was a trustworthy man. And he did everything that he could do for, for us. But there were times he, 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 certain things he, he couldn't do. He didn't have the ability to, to do it. But he tried and he did everything that he could possibly do to help my sister and I grow up and, and, and be a godly example before us. But he didn't have all ability. That was my natural dad. But he was a good type, an example. But my heavenly dad, there's nothing that he can't do. He said, taste and see that the Lord our God is good. Blessed, what does that mean? It amplified out, happy, fortunate, to be envied is the man who trusts and takes refuge in him. When we're in trouble, there's a place of refuge that we can go in. I'll never forget when we were started reaching the World Bible Church and we were over in a little building and, and we were going and, and, and we, were, we were having daily prayer on, not daily prayer, but on Tuesdays and Thursdays and we were coming in midday and, and we had been gone for about a year and, 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 I, and I, I, I just got tired. I said, Lord, it just looked like, you know, we need a breakthrough and, and, and it was just in that prayer time and it was just me and him there, me and my father and he was there and, and I was praying and praying about the church and praying about you all and folks coming in and and, and 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 I just broke down crying. I just started crying. Pastor, you yes. I, I, I'd gotten tired. I, I was weary and, and I thank God. I can when I remember that I can still feel feel his hand, my, my dad, my father's hand going on my back. He says, son, it's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. I needed that at that time. And you know what? It wasn't too long. It was all right. Folks started coming. Folks started being there. We grew. We grew out of that little building. People started getting blessed. People started getting healed and delivered. And you know what? I know. I know there are things that are going to happen in this place now. And, and my dad's gone on to be with heaven, but my father God, I, sometimes I can feel him on, uh, you know, I'm not crying and weeping right now, but, but, but I thank God. He's, I know he's patting me on the back. His son, everything's going to be all right. It, they're coming. They're coming. They're coming. It's going to be all right. He is our refuge. He's our for, fortress. Psalms of trust. As we come to a conclusion, Psalms 37, 5, last one. And this is important. Just the first word of this verse is so important. First few words. What does it say? Psalms 37, 5. Commit your way to the Lord. Roll and repose each care of your load on him. Quit trying to carry the weight of the world. Stop it. And allow God to carry it for you. How? Trusting him. Leaning on him, relying on him, and being confident also in him. And he'll bring whatever needs to be brought to pass to pass. Amen. So in the storms of life, what are you going to do? You're going to trust God. When you, when you don't see anything, when you can't even see around you, what you're going to do? You're going to trust God. When people tell you that you ain't going to make it, what are you going to do? You're going to trust God. Trust God. And you don't have to act like it's just a, 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 a like, like they say in sports, I, I don't know what we're going to do. Down to the last day, they're going to have to just, just throw up a Hail Mary. They said, they just throw up a prayer. Dear Lord, that's what they should have done at the beginning. That's what we should do at the very beginning. They, they just throw up a prayer. When you really know how to pray, God's answer is always yes and amen. God will always be there. He knows the end before the beginning ever starts. What are we going to do? We're going to trust God. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord, that we can trust you. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing that destroys yokes and removes burdens. We thank you, Lord, that we have life and life more abundantly in you. Thank you, Lord, for showing yourself mightily in our health, in our finances, in our businesses, in our families. Thank you, Lord, for, for seeing us through. Thank you, Lord, that we can lean on you. 
that we can put all our weight on you, that we can uh, turn our yokes over to you because they've been weighing us down and take yours. They're easy and light, and we trust you, Lord. We trust you that not only that you're going to help us, but you're going to see us through because we trust you. We rely on you. We're confident. We're leaning on you. And we thank you that you'll support us in everything, everywhere we are, and in everything we do. We give you the praise and we give you honor. And if you agree with that, just say amen. All eyes closed, all heads bowed, all eyes closed. If you're out there, if you're out there in the e-church and you've never given your heart over to Christ, that's the first and the only step that you need to make first is turning your heart and your life over to him. So right now, if you hadn't made him your Lord, I want you to stand up right where you are. If you at home or in here or wherever you are, and just turn your total trust over to him. And I'm going to give you a second invitation too. If you know you hadn't really been trusting God, you may have been saying, I'm trusting God, but then when the pressure comes, you start looking somewhere else. But you're not going to do that anymore. You're going to put all your weight in leaning on him. You stand up right where you are. In this house, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I have to see you up there, sir. Everybody at home, we're going to be in agreement with you. You just made a decision that God's going back, and he'll never let you down. I'm going to ask everyone in the house, go ahead and stand up with us. Because if you trust in him, you've turned your heart and life over to him. And let's just pray this prayer together. Pray with me. Father God, right now, I trust you. I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart that you paid the price so I could have life and life more abundantly. I thank you, Lord, that you have forgiven me of my sins and cleansed me of all unrighteousness. I'm saved. I'm free because I trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. You just prayed that prayer. We've got some information materials we want to send you and uh, we want to give you to help you. You see on the screen those three mini books that you can write. Yeah, you can be seated in the house. You can be seated at home too. If you, it, and, and you see that QR code, you can scan it and, and it'll take you to a video that'll tell you what it is. Uh, if you want to be a part of this church family and, and how we just say welcome to the family. And we thank God for the anointing of God, for the grace of God, for the mercies of God. God will meet you right at your face. And we thank God for that, and we encourage you. If you're looking for a church home, your search is over. Come on, be a part of us. You can be anywhere in the world. Be a part of this church family. And God will help you because you can trust him. Amen. Y'all glad you came today? Amen. I, I'm glad you did. Remember, next week, 30th church anniversary and homecoming here at Recent World Bible Church. Special service at 1 o'clock. We invite you to come on. We're going to have our morning worship at 10, and we're going to let you out for a little while, and then we're going to come back, go have a great time in God and celebrating. And uh, you bring friends with you online, wherever you are. Invite friends to come and be with us for that. Uh, we're we're, we're going to have that, too, where you can see that if you're anywhere in the world. So we just thank God. Okay, I'm going to now stand up again. E-Church. We love you. God bless you. Our announcer is going to come and share some things with you. We'll see you the next time. Here's our announcer. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today for this life-changing word. If you pray the prayer of salvation, we have some materials to help you with your new walk with God. Three mini books by Dr. Kenneth E. Hagan. The New Birth in him and why tongues these books are a free gift that will give you a greater understanding of salvation what you are entitled to have in god and the empowerment of the holy spirit
If you would like to become a partner with RTWBC, your prayers and financial support will help us work together and accomplish great things for God. On our church website, rtwbc.com, you can submit prayer requests and also give to the ministry safely and securely by debit or credit card on our online giving page. Just go to Choose Funds and follow the directions. You can also give by Cash App at dollar sign RTWBC. PayPal at RTWBC at BellSouth.net or by mail at Reaching the World Bible Church, P.O. Box 2487, Sylacauga, Alabama 35150. Stay connected with us through our Reaching the World Bible Church Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and podcast platforms. You can also contact us at www.rtwbc.com. Joining us at 109 North Cannon Avenue, Sylacauga, Alabama 35150 or call us at 256-249-9790. Please join us again for our next service where we will continue to preach the uncompromising word of God to help feed your faith and starve your doubts to death. God bless you and we'll see you on the next time.